Okay, let's set the record straight. Doxing is defined by Dictionary.com as a search for and publish of private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. While there are legal consequences associated with doxing, we're just going to focus on the fact that it's a pretty shitty thing to do. There are parts of this term that we will break down further, however, it is important to note that publish is defined as, legally, the act of communicating to a third party by the same website. I mean, at the end of the day, let's say, let's say my channel is dead. Let's say everyone attacks me. Let's say, you know, I go through the same thing with that happened in 2016, but let's say it's worse. If that happens and I finally get destroyed, at least, oh my God, I can finally fucking retire. Are you comparing yourself to Thanos? <laughs> it feels like you're doing a Thanos shtick here. I dox destiny. Doxing is bad if someone has the intent to harass. Yeah, but you said you had the intent to harass just destiny, so wouldn't that make your dox illegal? I said that I wanted to harass him, but... That's the same as it, that means intent, dude. <laughs> oh, whatever, yeah. I got some guilty. I'm not hacking into his shit. I'm not, I'm not doing anything but looking at public information that he posted publicly. So... You know, this whole thing where Tommy plays this big guy, and sa same thing with Nick, where they play this fucking big guy like, you know what, we have dirt on Keemstar. No, you don't. I doxed him. What are you going to do about it? And I don't give a fuck what anyone says. If you think my career is going to be ruined or hurt in any way for what I just said on this show and what I've admitted to, you're crazy. Let's put the pressure on fucking Fat Oreo and Tommy C and let's fucking expose. Come on, get it out there. Let people know what you got. Otherwise, you're full of shit. You stupid motherfuckers got in your cars and you want to play chicken with me. Well, guess what? I am not swerving. Let's go, release the audio, yeah. release the audio. Hey, Nicholas the Oreo, we in this shit, son? On February 11th, 2019, a branch of the commentary community was brought together under Keemstar to fight a common enemy at the time. The chat that was associated specifically was known as the NCO, a chat that was once built and designed to create a place for small creators to grow without Keemstar's influence, and had decided this situation was big enough to warrant Keemstar entering the chat and eventually calling the shots. Accusations surrounding Just Destiny had included filing a false copyright strike strike on a 13 year old kid and filing a shady cease and desist that Keemstar leaked to the public without that kid Lieutenant Cobra's consent along with his email address. Keemstar had interviewed Just Destiny in the days prior and had been losing subscribers due to his own mistake. So if he apologizes okay. to you, that's the yeah. only way you'll release the claim? Um, or talking to his parents, either or, you know. Okay. Is, is that fair? I mean, I just, it seems really weird to me. It's like, to, to, from the outside looking in, like, it makes me have to ask this question. Like, do you yeah. touch kids? Oh my God, really? But, but do you? Um, do you touch kids? Let's break this part down, shall we? The accusation Keemstar made was based solely on three specific factors. One, Just Destiny made questionable thumbnails. Two, just Destiny admitted to some form of abuse in his childhood. 3. Just Destiny struck a video where a child called him a nonce. This is a slang term for pedophile. Now, if you think accusing him of being a pedophile is a reasonable explanation to come to from those three specific factors, then you're fucking stupid. We are hindering our entire argument on thumbnails of screenshots of Dr. Phil's content that aired on daytime television. This is the kind of big brain thinking that we are discussing here. Abuse? Who said it was sexual? That's sure how it was interpreted, but do you have proof? And maybe the thought of being called a fucking pedophile wasn't something that Just Destiny wanted on his record, especially from a young impressionable fan base that Keemstar commands, who would listen to anything that comes from this guy's mouth and spam the innocent man's channel. You don't have to be a pedophile to feel disgusted for being named one with no evidence to back that claim up. To put this even further in perspective, and I'll try not to laugh, imagine you're a guy at tips.fbi.gov. 
A guy who is fucking tasked with analyzing Dr. Phil thumbnails. If you think it would be embarrassing to send to the FBI, maybe it's embarrassing to hinge your entire YouTube drama on it. Which, by the way, and I can't stress this enough, is where all internet pedo accusations should go. Law enforcement and contacting the FBI so proper procedures are met is probably your best choice, and the wrong guy won't be publicly shamed. Finally, the best guy who posted this video has taken the video down and admitted that what he said wasn't true. Uh, see, I would have sat here for the next 10 years because uh, I'm not going to let somebody run me off. But now that the whole thing's cleared up and you guys know I'm a good guy, I'd like to go take a break. Wash my face. Put some cold water on my face. Have a cup of coffee, relax for a minute, and then I'll come back and start tweeting again, or twi twitching again, okay? I I'm not calling him, I'm not telling him my phone number. I don't want that guy to bother me no matter what. I don't want his money, I don't want his apology. Because <laughs> you know what? Uh, I know who and what I am, and my real friends know who and what I am, and they stuck by me. Thank you very much for everything. This is not an isolated incident. For someone who's batting 50% already with pedophiles being exposed on his platform, you'd think that Keemstar would have been more careful than he was back in 2016. I guess the villainization, hindered reputation, and the sub-loss wasn't enough to teach Keemstar that valuable lesson. Unfortunately for Keemstar, some of his fans felt the same way, leading to a minor sub-loss, 3,000 to be precise, and it surely couldn't have been a big deal for a channel his size, right? Well, it was, and we'll come back to that later. This is when Keemstar decided to enlist the help of a group of YouTubers known as the NCO. The group that sole purpose of existing was to create a community where small commentators could grow without the influence of Keemstar. So obviously adding Keemstar to this group could have some major consequences and, I don't know, defeat the entire purpose of why this chat existed in the first place. But what do I know? What do I know? Apparently, nobody cared what I knew. Keemstar entered the group under the pretenses that we needed to gather together to make a united stand against filing false copyright strikes. That may be all well and good, but it became soon very clear that what he said here couldn't have been farther from the truth. He also had asked us for help looking into the legality of a cease and desist issued by Just Destiny to Lieutenant Cobra. It was at that moment when the narrative had begun to shift, where Keemstar says that Just Destiny could be a pedophile. This was because of those previous reasons stated above, with the added factor that he doesn't show his face. Because apparently, he couldn't have had any other reason about wanting to stay with a low profile. A life, a family, a child, a job, literally any other reason a YouTuber would want to protect their identity, apparently makes you a suspect. Keemstar implies he's working with a source shortly after I jokingly said, if you want his docs, maybe you should contact Zoom. This is documented in my DMs with the right opinion, and his arguments here. Now, so wait, you told me to go reach out to Zoom so I take your advice, and now I didn't I'm know. the bad guy? The joke was based entirely on the fact that Keemstar knew Zoom doxed me less than a month before. I attempted to contact him a plethora of ways for assistance, but I was ignored on every front. He watched the shot from the Point episodes where I talked about that, and the guilt in his voice when he was confronted on stream is deafening. Because even if you ignore context for the sake of your argument, you're still the guy who contacted Zoom. I mean, if I told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? I didn't put a gun to your head and say, abracadabra, make Keemstar work with Zoom. You willingly made that decision, one that put you into business with a swatter. Richmond Police Department's Division of Emergency Communications. If you have an emergency, please hang up now and dial 911. Wait while I transfer your call. Richmond Communications, Amp speaking, how may I help? I'm just, I'm feeling really down about myself tonight. People keep commenting on me and telling me that uh, I'm not really that entertaining on YouTube and my channels are, my channel's just not getting a whole lot of traffic anymore. Do you have any um, weapons on you? Yes. 
What type of weapon do you have? I have my right and my left fist, and I also have a sushi knife that I use to make food sometimes when I want to have some sushi on some toast. Uh, I'm really good friends with uh, Officer Detective uh, Mary Gary Ford, and I just... You think maybe you could send her over here? I just, I wanna, I wanna go ahead and I wanna admit that I did have everything that I lied to her about on my computer and I just, I can't deal with the lies anymore. I just need to come forward. What an idiot. Why the hell would I do anything illegal like swat him? You can prank call people. There's nothing wrong with that. A doxer. He was able to dox Tonka, his grandmother, Vamp, Thomas Ellington and anal vape, an alleged pedophile. My boyfriend's a pedophile. Um, you do this from the get go. You no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Did. And by the second week that we were together, you'd already looked through my computer twice, and I told you everything. I didn't know you watched <laughs> like child pornography. So we're in good company, clearly. The kind of stand-up guy that a child audience of Keemstar would be looking up to. Keemstar makes it very clear, however, that he didn't work with Zoom. I have a couple people asking specifically, was Zoom involved? I don't think so. Well, a claim I heard, uh, and I'm seeing in chat, is that you uh, colluded with someone called Zoom. Is this, is this true or not? I don't remember. Can you, you go back remember. and, can you go back so you and look in the chat? Not. I may have, I may have, I may have, I may have not. You know, I was working with a lot of people, but I'm not in the, these are private conversations. Oh wait, did I say didn't? I meant he did work with Zoom. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I have his Skype name because that's how I talked, did a drama or interview with him. Oh, I, I mean, he didn't know Zoom was as bad as he is. Um, I didn't know that Zoom was out there swatting yeah, people. That Zoom was just finding un information on people, like left and right. Like, I remember being on the kill stream as a guest and fucking, I would like joke around and ask Zoom like what the weather's gonna be tomorrow in my area because he was spitting out facts about fucking Tonka left and right. Oh, did I say he didn't? I mean, he knew exactly who Zoom was. Everyone does. Find audio of me saying I know Zoom. But I did contact Zoom. Everybody that knows Zoom knows that he fucking swatted Ralph, knows that he's doxed people. Like, this is fucking known. In fact, he knew Zoom so well that you could hear how uncomfortable he was in this clip. Here, it took place less than a month prior. Later? Uh, I can give a small hint. And I'll link. Uh, I had about a good 40 minute conversation this morning with a, an assistant district attorney in Tonka's county. Uh, Zoom, don't you think that's going too far? No. Like, do we really need to put Tonka in jail? Like, yes. he's he's publicly known on the internet as a bitch. He, his career is done and over with. Like, it's not enough. one day, Matt, but like, he's trying to put him in jail. No, no, like, I feel like on, that's too far, Kim, 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 you, you, you need to understand, he's not internet people, so it's not going to affect he, him. Yeah, uh, he has taken money from nah, Taylor. I just he's taking money he's from the far. It's right, not enough. He, 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 I, he, fuck him. I don't know, dude. I feel like if you come out on top and the person is completely defeated, like, why? I'm not doing why? shit, though. I'm just sitting It's back. not enough, Keem, because he'll never stop. And, and Like, you know, he's you're, dead. You're nice Do you actually... He's so dead. Like, it's done. It's, it's over with. You're up. completely lost. <laughs> Do you really have to dig yes. the grave? <laughs> Put him in and then you know, bury him. Keem, and then you're, have you're a like a, you're a really nice guy. I, I can understand why you think that you know that's fucked up, but you know what? Tonka is the kind of person that if you leave him long enough, he will find a way back. He is like a cockroach that has been nuked. He will not go away. <sighs> that, no, he's he's a fan of people that time. still follow him to this day. That I disagree. Still have this fucking narrative. They will not let him die. I disagree. We'll I don't back. think there's any chance he could come back. He's I don't. Tried, man. He, he, I'm going he's... to. I'm going to make sure this happens, and then I'm finally gonna have the last stone for the IBS gauntlet, and I will snap my fingers and I will whisper in his ear. I hope they'll remember you, Michael Pilkington. <laughs> the amount of ridiculous backtracks and blatant lies told by Keemstar, with some being literally two minutes apart, is simply baffling. Going from Zoom is good at getting simple bits of information like the weather to Zoom is apparently the Encyclopedia Dramatica for finding people's sensitive personal information. Alexa, have Zoom show me Just Destiny's face. 
Now, Zoom was never added to this group chat with the commentators, and it's very likely that nobody there had any idea who he was, considering these are two very different communities. However, I took the time to warn the group leader the right opinion with a very detailed message describing what we're dealing with here. But my worries would go ignored through the day and most of the night. It was at this point where we had realized that the cease and desist is sketchy. I physically drove to the law firm and confirmed that it looked as sketchy as it sounded. What I would find upon my return was a Google Hangout. The Google Hangout was a public room started by Keemstar and open to any NCO member and a few people outside the group eventually joined as well via a link that was handed out. The Hangout consisted of Keemstar, Zoom, myself, Black Wolf Company, Jay Aubrey, Slacker TV, and a lawyer who I have decided not to name. The reason the lawyer will not be named is due to the fact that he was enlisted to provide free legal advice and was not briefed of the situation the way the other callers had been. He literally didn't know what we were talking about until he got there, and Keemstar gave him a pretty interesting response. Listen to this audio bite of Keemstar grossly overselling an argument that nobody in their right mind was making. So, this is a lot. I don't know if you've seen Drobler uh, recently with this thing with Just Destiny. I've been following it on Twitter, but uh, that's not okay. it. So, long story short, there's this um, YouTuber whose name's Just Destiny. Um, he's anonymous. Nobody knows who he is. He's never shown his face. He just has an avatar. Um, he's uploaded some videos of some underage girls that were like sexualizing. And you know, his the nature of his videos was saying, these girls are too young to be dancing half naked. You know, this girl's only 11. This girl's only 14. So. Right. He didn't get too much hate for that because people have seen it at face value of like, hey, look, you know, he's telling these girls to put on clothes. However, um, some people saw his videos and his thumbnails as like, hey, dude, you're using this as clickbait to bring in pedos and to get views from horny little boys. Let that sink in. This was a YouTuber who made clickbait thumbnails on Dr. Phil videos. All clips were from the show that literally airs on television. Well, within minutes, shocker, Zoom was able to find a lead. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. So I start looking into it and I see that Sherman owns this. So I remembered at the very bottom of the thing, it says Just Destiny Michael Sherman. And I'm thinking, why is he so mad? So I look up sex offenders in New York. There's a Michael J. Sherman that's on a 10 year probation thing for sex offending, for having sex with a person less than 14 Ooh. years old. No. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Stupidity. It can't be that stupid. <laughs> so then, so then you start you start to look into like you know who it is, and it turns out that and is the CEO of an a of a, a PBX company in Massachusetts that does telecom. Yeah, and then you look at there's a PBX box that's set up to handle all the ca the call routing for the for the law firm. When you look up oh the exchange, it goes to AES. You know, you're a little too good at this. <laughs> so this dude set up like a fake law firm from like his mom or his I guess his uh, his grandma's house or maybe his wife's house, and he's running a fake law firm and threatening people with fake letters. Because none of what these people, none these of these things? people, all, all these three here and these two here, they're not licensed to practice law in New York. And there is no yeah. law firm called Dash and Associates in New York. I looked it up. But for Keemstar, the law firm being a sham simply isn't enough. It's almost like this isn't about exposing the law firm at all. We need to find the identity of Just Destiny. And the next part of the call is really telling about exactly what we're dealing with here. The mental gymnastics are impeccable. But this is the only Michael J. Sherman that lives in New York that's registered and has voting records. And they live at this address. And there's only one Michael J. Sherman that's a registered sex offender in New York. And it's this guy. Man. So why would a YouTuber face out, that's though, being... Like his face is floating around because he said that... I, I've, never, I've never seen a face video of his... On one of the streams yesterday, he was talking to that girl, and he said, uh, that's my- no, no, not a face reveal. Like, someone leaked it and sent it to him. Uh, well, I- said, I- oh, I- yeah, that's my I face, that's not public, I thought. Hmm. 
Uh, I tend to press X to doubt on people. Yeah, I don't. I mean, at the end of the day, the guy that I talk to on Drama Alert, just Destiny, the YouTuber, he just does not sound 35 years old. He really does not. He sounds like a kid. People told me he was 21, 22. Yeah. So it's gonna. It's hard to to match that voice with that face, but fuck. I guess anything's possible, right? Yeah, you know what they, I mean, this is weird, but you know what they say about uh, people who are victims of abuse is sometimes their voice gets locked at the age where they're abused. Well, uh, he was abused. If, he if was. he's a, sex offenders have a high likelihood of being sexual abuse victims, mm -hmm. it's possible that something like that could have happened. You know, if, we're, if we're going by his famous birthdays profile, he's only 20. Um, I don't know how legit that is. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even say his real name. I see legit. Birthdays, so I don't believe it. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. If you think that sounds insane, you're right. And you didn't hear incorrectly. The genius intellectuals have pieced this grand facade together, and don't you dare backtalk them. It makes perfect sense. Just Destiny isn't in his early 20s, guys. He simply sounds like it. He's actually a 35-year-old pedophile who was sexually assaulted and abused by a family member at the ripe old age of 22 years old, and his vocal cords just got stuck. That's why he sounds like that. Guys, it makes perfect sense. Unfortunately, Debbie Downer Nick DiOrio was there to set the record straight. Now, why would he react that way? He's one of the cool, calm, collected guys. Yeah. Maybe some people can't take criticism. Maybe he heard the word pedo in the conversation and said, I have it out, I can flag this guy down. Where he didn't have that opportunity in the other ones. And he ran with the pedo thing so people felt bad for him and didn't get mad at him for flagging. That's my take on this whole thing. Well, uh, like Just Destiny got pissed? Yeah, I think Just Destiny can't take criticism. He saw an out to get this little 15-year-old kid. He tried to scare him off with a fake letter, and that's where we are. And then he made every possible wrong decision from there on through. Now, it's okay. possible that he's a pedophile. Regardless if he's an actual pedo or not, we have him say in an interview that he was a victim of being, that he was child molested. Like, somebody child molested him. I'm sorry, but there's too much to go. Dude, there's so many red flags. Let me tell yeah. you, there are a lot of red flags. You're right. There are a lot of red flags. Just not about pedophilia. There are a lot of red flags like threatening a lawsuit on a minor or abusing the copyright system, or going to a phony law firm. But at this point, in my opinion, I'm thinking Keemstar is rooting for this man to be a pedophile. So bad that he either blindly is believing what people are telling him, or he's willing to look past the glaring flaws of the arguments. It's just, it's so weird that like, this Just Destiny guy is so mad yeah. about somebody accusing him of being like a weirdo or you know touching kids and when you yeah, asked dude. him about that sexual game, predator he got so yeah, when weird you, when you asked him that's why i'm glad you asked him that because it just it put him on the spot and i think you really have to look at the way he addressed that question to know the truth do you touch kids john <laughs> no. john do you not. touch kids no no slack dude either. i got so much shit for that dude i lost almost three thousand subscribers yeah, i'm really <laughs> oh, Jesus hey. Christ, my mic. yeah i'm really kind of surprised about that like i didn't i mean i don't know I'm it just doesn't made really... me motivated. today i made one of the greatest travelers ever i'm going to war with this motherfucker now i'm excited <laughs> about fucking working <laughs> God, you guys make it so easy! Yeah, no, Zoom, that makes total sense. I can't imagine why anyone would have reacted that way about being called a pedophile. Well, if we didn't have intent before, we do now. But if we get back off this tangent, we'll find that our perfect lead disintegrates before our very eyes. Why, you ask? Because Michael Sherman, the pedophile, was in jail while all this was happening. <laughs> Not because the lead made no fucking sense. So I'm gonna say, uh, Michael Sherman is in a correctional facility. He got six months in local no. jail. Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit hard to, you know, upload YouTube videos when you're in that kind of situation. <laughs> so, I mean. yeah. yeah. At this point, the law firm, the copyright strike, and the cease and desist had stopped mattering. Keemstar's motivations had become more and more obvious. Skype resolver, I don't get it. What the fuck? 
So a VPN or would it still pop up? No, just nothing's coming up. His username's not coming up, which was weird because I couldn't add him because I couldn't find his username. His user, well, I mean, I shouldn't really give out his private Skype, but I have his Skype. I have his Skype name. It literally is this name, but like when I went to go add it on Skype, it like it, the name doesn't show up. He has it like hidden somewhere. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I have his Skype name because that's how I talked, did a drama or interview with him. I run his Skype name through Skype resolvers and they don't work. Nothing comes up. What's his Skype name? Uh, I'm going to send it to you right now. Because I don't want to really share his Skype name publicly with anyone. I don't want that getting out. But I mean, yeah, I know. I'll send it to you just because like, I don't want to fucking betray this dude's trust. Or, well, not betray this dude's trust, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't... That's his private fucking number. I'm not giving that shit out. That's understandable. Um, yeah. But... So, I looked into I want to try to get the Kelsey fucking Gilbert. ID attached to that, which you could do with a Skype resolver, and it's not yeah. working. Well, a lot of the Skype resolver stuff stopped working a while ago because uh, Skype enabled um, super noting to keep people from resolving IPs. So, you can get the closest node now instead of just you know what their actual ip is unless they're dumb enough to click a an ip tracker thing yeah well maybe i should make one of those and be like dude is this you in the picture and i'll click on it so i'm looking up right i found her on facebook two seconds what daddy's fighting the evil doers good night <laughs> <laughs> In this clip, Keemstar outright attempts to hack Just Destiny's Skype in acts that resemble some form of vigilante justice as opposed to journalism. He then hands his personal Skype, which has, he just stated, he shouldn't leak, directly over to Zoom. Listen, motherfucker, I don't want you ever bitching about leaking DMs ever again when you're handing personal Skypes over to Zoom, you fucking hypocrite. And the next arc of our story takes us to the NCO, or well, whoever's awake at the NCO because we're approaching 3 o'clock in the morning. At this point, I was made well aware by the right opinion that Just Destiny's name was not Michael, and he was not Michael Sherman the pedophile. And since the trail had gone cold, Keemstar convinced the remaining NCO members who were awake to finish the job. Now, I'm clearly not going to show screenshots of how they were able to find what we think is Just Destiny's name, address, picture, and various other pieces of personal information that Keemstar and The Right Opinion have both graciously admitted that we had uncovered. However, I'm going to walk you through what had happened. Keemstar said he was going to gather his information and send Just Destiny his docs. The NCO members finally snapped out of it and alerted him that it would be unwise to threaten a man with his personal information. After the group had agreed that the information they found is who they believe was Just Destiny, they continued to look through various details of his social media profiles to see that when he was 12, he said the N-word. Keemstar then promptly told the chat that he was once again going to send Just Destiny his own docs on the ground that we have deemed him a racist. Well, I'm not kidding. This is actually true. That's a narrative that lasted until the person we believe to be Just Destiny himself was an ethnicity that would, let's just say, allow him to use that word. At this point, me and Tommy are laughing hysterically and just making joke after joke after joke at Keemstar's expense because clearly Just Destiny wasn't a pedophile or a racist or anything. He just copy-striked a fucking 13-year-old. Keemstar had just embarrassed himself on Drama Alert and he asked a ridiculous question. After being shot down about sending Just Destiny's docs for a third time, literally for no reason on the last one, Keemstar finally snaps and sends this message. The dude pulled the victim card on me and said hate to me and everyone else that defended the kid. He's getting bullied for that. No way out. Suddenly, it's not about the child. It's not about the law firm. It's not about the cease and desist. 
And now it's not even about pedophile accusations. It's about getting even. It's about character assassination. It's about getting even no matter what it costs and winning even if a man goes down on accusations that are absolutely not true. And that's where we enter motivation. On screen, you're seeing it now. He doesn't care about the kid. He doesn't care about the copy strikes. It's about Keemstar. It's about his channel. It's about his credibility that he will do absolutely anything and everything to protect, even if it means smearing an innocent man as a pedophile for his young, impressionable fan base to tear to shreds. And you know why Keemstar did it? Why would you lose subs? I don't understand. Oh my god, just Destiny fans are full-blown idiots. Keemstar, you were so unprofessional in your interview with Just Destiny. Why? Because I called him out for being wrong? I'm not gonna get butt hurt and sensitive. So offended that he told me in the interview that he would take it down by any means possible. And now I got people hating on me like somehow I did something wrong. Every single one of you are wrong. You're all wrong. Every single one of you are wrong. If you think that I did anything wrong, feel like I'm getting attacked by a pedo ring. I'll make 10 videos about this, I don't care. These Just Destiny fans are idiots. I have no idea what is happening to Traveler and its subscribers. Like, it makes no sense. Like, I lost 3k subs. What caused me to lose 75 subs there? It makes no sense. This doesn't make sense to me. What? Why? What? Is and that's all the proof I needed, especially after I saw how he responded to this. Have you seen how many contradictions come out of the final boss of the internet's mouth? He states on screen that it wasn't about the 3,000 subscribers lost. And then he states here that it literally was the reason, and he admitted it already. If you want to know why Keemstar dug up all this information, it was because he lost 3,000 subs on his social blade. That's the only reason this happened. I literally just said that like 15 minutes ago, that I was pissed off at him. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. He states that he didn't use any hacks. Or does, do I have the right to find their old image and be like, oh, okay, that's what this guy actually looks like. I'm not hacking into his shit. I'm not, I'm not doing anything but looking at public information that he posted publicly. So, you know, this whole thing where Tommy plays this big guy, and sa same thing with Nick, where they play this fucking big guy like, you know what, we have dirt on Keemstar. No, you don't. I doxed him. What are you gonna do about it? But clearly he did, while sending his personal Skype to fucking Zoom. I run his Skype name through Skype resolvers and they don't work, nothing comes up. What's his Skype name? Uh, I'm gonna send it to you right now. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. He says he never heard about my motivation. And what did I tell you every time we've ever talked? I don't care if I have a future on this platform. I don't want You've to never be a big YouTuber. You never actually said that to actually, me. What are you saying? I don't You're just want lying. To. What have I, I told you every time? I, but he clearly did. And what I told you was 100% truth. If you don't think Tommy sees on a sinking ship, then you don't understand reality. You don't understand. I'm not doing this to be a famous or doing this for money. I'm just having fun, bro. Oh, well, how much fun is it to fucking be uh, associated with Tommy? I had a good time Tommy? on that show. Yeah, well, didn't seem like you were having a, too much of a good time. Oh, Talk is a great guy. He's going to destroy Andy Worski. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, I thought he was going to. I was wrong. And the lie detector test determined that was a lie. He said he didn't know who Zoom was. Um, I didn't know that Zoom was out there swatting yeah, you're people. You're absolutely dead. But he clearly did. But you knew who he was when you were on the kill stream about a month before Just Destiny. When the Tonka stuff went down, you were in a conversation with Zoom talking about how you knew him prior because he was involved with Lizard Squad. I, I did contact Zoom. Everybody that knows Zoom knows that he fucking swatted Ralph, knows that he's doxed people. like. This is fucking known. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. And I'll save the best one for last. If he's already lied about all these things, why trust anything the man has to say now? 
Certainly a trustworthy man is the kind of guy that makes things not news or not newsworthy when it's not a convenient situation to platform or the person associated is not his friend. Well, an innocent man wouldn't block most of the NCO, block the entire cast of RFC After Hours, block casual stream fans of RFC After Hours, or butter up to me in the DMs. If I was innocent, I would have done those things too. Next up is the right opinion. Leader of the NCO, what are his motives to allow this entire event to transpire? Well, he wanted Keemstar in this chat because he would take down Just Destiny. And as it says here, he thinks that taking down Just Destiny is the most important factor here placed before what I would assume are ethics and morals. It is impossible to clear the right opinion of all blame because he was warned. Take these DMs for example. There's also a video message that Tommy C had sent him that's pretty damning by its own merit. I want you to think about something. If he puts all you fuckers on a pedo hunt and it turns out he's not a pedo, he's gonna take the whole NCO down with him. He asked you guys to do a gay op on a guy that we don't know if it's guilty or not. The guy he's enlisted is famous for making false pedo all allegations. This is a bad fucking move and it could affect every single commentator in there. This is not, I, I gotta be honest with you, this Just Destiny thing, it has more to do with their communities not being connected. That's, that's what it is. That's all it is. This really could blow up in everybody's face, especially if we commit to going after this guy's, I mean, the whole thing rests on whether he's a pedo or not. What a fucking coin flip. This is a bad, bad idea. And I, actually, I cannot stand by it. If, if, if it comes out that you guys were all fucking gay opping this guy, and he goes, I will not, I will, I will absolutely disavow. I'm just telling you, this could blow up in your face and you built something great. It's going to be taken down by this prick, and he's going to walk away and be fine. Look, I 100% I agree that videos have to be made. There has to, that has to be some pushback. There has to be uh, um, a, um, uh, well, there has to be um, some kind of pushback or something like that. But not this pedo shit. You want to get him on the copyright strike thing? On, uh, yeah, 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 great. It's worth trying, right? I understand the lack of consequence. But the fact is, now we're bringing in, we're, we're bringing in, we're, we're bringing in a bad actor in a, in a situation. A guy that's willing to do anything. And he doesn't give a fuck about Just Destiny. And he doesn't give a fuck about copyright strikes. What he cares about is his channel bleeding and his reputation. And now Clown's going to go and try to bail him out. That's what my, that's what my problem is. We built this as an alternative to him. And he is the one that's going to take it apart. He's the one that's going to spoil our reputations. We got to all sit there and say, hmm, no, maybe he's a pedo. It's going to fuck everything up. It's going to fuck absolutely everything up. And that's what I'm concerned about. And God, let me tell you something. Just says he's a piece of shit. But if he gets smeared as a pedo and he's not one, holy shit. Holy shit, we did something horrible. And that's what's got to be thought about. And he's willing to do it. He's willing to stand by a guy. He stood by a guy that said, I piss in kids' mouths. What do you think he would do? He'll throw us aside like it's nothing. Find out. Find out why I called him on the Catch 33 or I called him evil. You're gonna find out if he keeps around. You're gonna find out the hard way. The guy you're talking about is a guy named Zoom. He, uh, I, he first came to my attention because he, um, he actually was, he apparently, uh, although it was a joke, played um, child porn for, a, um, uh, for his girlfriend and got exposed for it by his girlfriend. He since went on and, um, accused all sorts of people. If you really want to get to the bottom of it, the Nick. Nick's got his whole background. He's a former Liber Lizard Squad guy. He's connected with white supremacists in the alt-right. And he frequently doxes people live on the Ralph Ray tour. Like, like, oh, uh, and, and dox the fucking uh, Diorio as well. That's who we're dealing with. That's who we're enlisted. That's who we're getting in the fucking bed with. And it does. It pisses me off. Um, D Zoom. Zoom is the guy. He's, he's like, he's a Lizard Squad guy, connected to the alt-right, re reads out doxes on the Ralph Ray tour as early as, like, last week. Um... Uh, it, it, all sorts of it, false. It, it, talk to Nick. He knows all the history. I don't. I have nothing to do with this guy. So I'm like, I gotta go to bed. All right. Nick told me when you guys were talking. Nick said, "Why don't you get Zoom? It's a joke." And he's like, "I'll get him right on it." That's what was mentioned when I was alive, and you guys were in some kind of meeting. That's what Zoom is, right? When that guy gets involved, we, we got a problem. This is all about fucking saving Keith. This has nothing to do with Destiny. Nothing. You know, I understand how important, um, you know, getting this guy is and making him pay. I don't, don't think that's lost on me. I, I do think it's important. But 
I think the NCO is more important, and I think keeping distance from him is more important. I don't want Just Destiny to win this one, even if Keem's a nut. Keem's gonna release another video tonight, and I don't want it to sink. Jesus. Then there are the DMs of me explaining what essentially was play-by-play -play of what was happening in the Google Hangout that now confirms Keemstar is working with Zoom. There's no excuse on why Keemstar wasn't removed right away, there and then. This had clearly gone off the rails and removal would have been the only viable solution, especially knowing that we basically had everything we needed to make a functioning narrative on Just Destiny right there and then. Instead, this ridiculous charade is allowed to continue that gets Just Destiny's personal information dug up. However, the right opinion has owned up to this and apologized. In my personal opinion, I believe it should be up to Just Destiny on whether this apology should be accepted. So he asks, um, if it was a mistake on, on your end to let Keem in the chat in the first place, and if you blame yourself for this to an extent as the leader as the, of the NCO. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was definitely a fucking mistake. And, um... I kind of just didn't perceive it as a as a big threat at the time because it was basically we had him in before he was a, he was a, he was a he was a shit lord he, he tried to kick everyone we thought it's probably going to be like that again um and it just it didn't resolve itself and it got to the stage where it was we, I got to that mental dilemma where I was like, well, we could, we could just kick him now. And I did actually speak to um, someone in the call and I say, if he gets, if he gets, if he tries to do anything with, with information he obtains, I think you should kick him. But at the same time, he was in a call with a known dangerous doxer. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, if everyone just kicks him out of, of the group chat, who wants to stop him from still persisting in, in the hangout? Well, they, they're, they're chasing this stupid guy called Michael. He might not be stupid, actually, but that's besides the point. Yeah. What happens? And I was hoping it would just play out. It didn't just play out. And... Um... They got, they got his name. And with that said, from what I understand, if I recall correctly, people did talk him out of, of using it. And no one in the chat advocated him um, to use it against just Destiny. Because mm -hmm. that would have been profoundly fucked up. There are, there are, other, there are other issues um, that we can address before that. But yes, I do. I do take responsibility for not just saying no because I just thought I th I always I always th thought about it like we've we've been doing this for every year. Um, the chat itself, nothing's really ever happened. What what's gonna what's gonna occur? And it just spiraled out of control. And I, as as the owner of the chat, failed to deal with it quickly enough. And that was my failure. I just, it, I just, I just never dealt with a situation like that before, and mm -hmm. I, I just, it was just a learning experience for me. And as soon as it happened, I, 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 I realized I couldn't make that same mistake again. I, 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 I just, I just didn't know what to do, and. Mm -hmm. I realize that sometimes an action is is just it's just not worth it. It's not right. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not it won't it won't give it won't give you the, the, the correct result. Even even if even if it does prevail and nothing happens, you can't risk it. It's not worth the risk. You have to stop it early on before it manifests into anything else. And that's a that's a principle that I've lived by and preached a lot of my time. But at the same time, I sometimes let that slip because I get scared of the confrontation that might have to appear before that. Because because if if it plays out and nothing happens, then I have to confront anyone and and deal with any of the fucking shit. And and but sometimes it doesn't play out, and then someone's getting fucked over, and I know that I could have done more, and I could have, I really could have, 
and so on that behalf yeah it was my failure it was it was my fucking failure in my opinion Troll was focused on the fact that this kid was being attacked, and Just Destiny was abusing the copyright system. It allowed him to be blinded, a lapse in judgment if you will. In this specific scenario, you can claim that you didn't know Zoom. You can claim that he wasn't 100% associated until we had concrete evidence in the Google Hangout. However, he is aware who Keemstar is. You can't ignore the fact that he let Keemstar in the group in the first place. Commentary 101 is knowing Keemstar will go to any length to prove a point, regardless of the cost, or apparently, the truth. Finally, the NCO's motivation. Particularly, Black Wolf Company, John Swan, Jay Aubrey, Slacker TV, Connor Howe, and anyone else who was awake for this shit show. Well, the only thing the guys in the voice chat were guilty of was agreeing on a few stupid points and the occasional joke being cracked. Nothing malicious happened in there. The guys involved with the doxing were either trying to impress Keemstar, or more likely as I'd like to believe, were just falling for the narrative and manipulated into thinking that we had any evidence that even remotely pointed to Just Destiny being a pedophile. I don't think there was malicious intent or any bloodthirsty doxing by the NCO. This was evident by the reaction Keemstar was met with when he loses his mind and declares he will DM Just Destiny his dox, because at that moment this no longer becomes research. This is offense. And at that point, he lost everyone, and people started to realize the true intentions of this event. As far as I know, nobody in the NCO has linked this dox from the group, and it hasn't been spoken about since, well, until now. As for their motivation, I'd like to think they were just guilty of falling for a layer of manipulation. There could be a social climbing aspect to it too, but I'm not gonna just pin that on them. While I don't think the doxing was malicious, I am surprised to see that nobody came forward. Even when I decided it had been time to come forward, it was very telling to see people who were involved laying into me. I had been, and was still being, harassed by Zoom for over a month when this all went down. My family was in danger. What was everybody else's excuse? Which leads to my conclusion. I'm sorry this video didn't come out sooner. Keemstar had once again proven he is incapable of holding a position of power. If he feels you wronged him, he will smear you with any accusation that could take your credibility down. Hack your Skype? Maybe take down a career with an army of YouTubers who think they're fighting the good fight. He sits here and proclaims that doxing is only illegal if he had the intent to harass. And he literally states he intended to harass just destiny. I dox destiny. Doxing is bad if someone has the intent to harass. Yeah, but you said you had the intent to harass Just Destiny, so wouldn't that make your dox illegal? I said that I wanted to harass him, but That's like, he never intent. said he, he never That's said That's intent. He... That's the same as it, that means intent. Dude. Oh, whatever. Yeah. I got some guilty. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the dox wasn't spread. It wasn't, right? Then it's just research. Well, why do I have YouTubers coming to me saying they know Just Destiny's supposed ethnicity? Uh oh. I trace this leak back to a YouTuber named Pugnant, who told me he was alerted in a voice chat with Black Wolf Company, Boblax, and Lieutenant Cobra. Boblax tells me he thought it was common knowledge. This blew my mind. I initially blamed Black Wolf Company, thinking he was bragging about it, which I do now apologize for. As it turns out, the genius himself, Keemstar, entrusted the sensitive docs of an innocent man to a child, a kid who fucking hates him. No, I'm not joking. We don't even know who else got this information leaked. So Keemstar, you published the docs. You attempted to hack a fucking IP address through Skype. You worked with a swatter. You manipulated creators. You lied about motives. You made 10 fucking Twitter videos all because you lost 3,000 subscribers. And while he told us he didn't give a shit about that. Jesus. That's pretty fucked up. Man, Just Destiny, don't you think that's kind of fucked up? Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Dude, you're making this so fun. I'm having a good time. It's funny, you usually leave when you're looking like an idiot.
I I'm amazed that you've stayed I here so long. I don't look like an idiot, Nick. You're it's actually the other way around. It's actually the other way around. Keem, you haven't said anything. You haven't said anything, and I've disproved majority of the things you said. If you go back, uh, let me see, 60 minutes from now, uh, you'd find where you said that you didn't go into a call with Zoom. Then you'd find in 20 minutes later where you don't remember you went into a call with Zoom. And then you go a little further up and you say, uh, I can't talk about that because that was a private conversation. Um, You've contradicted yourself so many times from start to finish. I shouldn't be forced. To, I shouldn't be forced to talk about my private conversation. No, you shouldn't. But you chose to. That. No, you shouldn't. But you chose to. You talked about him. Oh, uh, Wokim Osabi, dead air. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just kind of like. Oh, you're like, still here. I thought you left. <laughs> No, I'm just trying to think of like. I'm just yeah, you need think, a second, like, don't you? I'm just trying to think like. At the end of the day, this is just going to result in literally nobody wanting to talk to you. Okay. And what did I tell you? Every time we've ever talked, I don't care if I have a future on this platform. I don't want You've to never be a actually big YouTuber. You've never actually said that to me. Said, said that to me. Said, what are you saying? I don't You're just want lying. To. What I, if I told you every time? I, I went on interview yesterday. I went on an interview yesterday. I don't care. I like seeing the numbers go up. <laughs> it's not my job of choice. It's not my future. I really like the guys I met. I've talked to every YouTuber I've ever enjoyed, including yourself. So I've pretty much seen it all. And if everybody hates me tomorrow, and everybody takes your side because you're such a likable person, and you've talked a lot of shit, then so be it. I've had my fun. I've done my job, and you know what? I could, I could die hey, happy hey, knowing hey, that I finished. That's fine and all, that's fine and all. But why do you guys act like you're going to fucking, like, ruin me? I just don't get it. What I did was kind of fucked up. Just like I said, you asked me, um, you weren't trying to harass him. I, what did I tell you? I wanted to. I did want to. I was fucking mad at this little piece of shit. That's how I feel when I get up out of bed. I got money on my mind, pretty women on my head. I'm a hustle till I'm rich, or until a nigga dead. And you know I keep it real. You can vote me when I said I feel unstoppable. Pushing every obstacle. You niggas can't see me though. You bitches can't be me though. Boy, I feel unstoppable. Pushing every 